Hi everybody. How you doing? Uh, today we're going to be going over our meta tier list for January, February, that kind of thing. Uh, lots of decks. We have to do a lot of, a lot of work for these. These are always take a long time. But, but anyways, we got it done. Let's get started. All that good fancy stuff. Da -da. Hello, once again, we have our meta tier list. This time for the February season, generally data collected through end of January. So uh, usually there'll be two lists. We have the standard, which is the most popular list. And then we have the usually highest win rate average cubes list or high tech, like, you know, generally list. Doesn't always mean that those are going to be better, but usually popular is what you're going to see. And win rates are like some of the more unique stuff that you might find or, or more you know, obscure decks. So data compared to last month, I'm liking that I can see the differences from last month to this month and kind of some of the changes in the meta due to patch changes or just uh, popularity changes. People like decks being boosted by, you know, being popularized by other streamers or things like that. So it's, it's always interesting to see. I will say in terms of the criteria, I've changed my criteria quite a bit and I'll try to explain the reasoning here. So first of all, I just had this like weird tier three, which was um, I think 51 to 52. And then I also have 51 and tier four. So there's this weird case where I could have a 51% thing fit broke criteria. It didn't make sense to me. So we're just having tier three be 52%. That just made sense to me and then 51 is just tier four or so um we've also changed the um the criteria i use to guide things first of all i'm upping the collection level so i realized that normally i was using 486 i don't think that's super accurate first of all we we don't lose that much data but we lose a lot of the players that don't have all the cards Right. So there was this like subsection of players that just start the game. They're going through the hit collection level 500. They start getting series three cards, but they don't, they haven't like jumped into the spotlights heavy enough to have like a good section of series fours. So there were these like weaker decks that showed up because they were being played by newer players that don't have any of the new cards. Right. So by upping it quite a bit to 3000, we, we reduce a lot of that, and I think that's helpful. We don't lose a lot of data since most players are um, have played for a while. They have over 3K collection, but we kind of reduce some of that weird edge cases, which sometimes I don't like. And then I'm also including infinite in the rank. So before it was 70 to 99, but realized that, first of all, I'm losing a lot of data that makes sense, and I can account for like the Agatha stuff. I could just, you know, type, try taking that out, seeing, um, and also just 70 to 99 has its own issues in terms of that has bots, right? Bots will inflate some of the win rates or not the win rates, but some of the cube rates where you add the infinite, you'll kind of push that down a little bit. And you also are getting a wider section of, you know, just general game states and you, you can see what people will be playing throughout. And also it didn't change the numbers too much, but it, it, it felt useful. So those are some of the stuff we'll be having moving forward. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. And then generally same thing here. We have their standard list. We have our win rate list. We have the archetype tiers. So we're showing win rate, popularity, cube rate. Um, so I usually use untapped data here. Untapped had some issues in terms of Quite, um, getting the right archetypes correct, where there were some archetypes they just didn't have, which were like, you know, bounce and stuff like that. I, t um, I talked to them yesterday or so, and they responded and they said they changed their archetype system. I looked through, it's better. They still didn't get everything, but that's hard. But I appreciate, you know, them being willing to like adjust on the fly based on my random feedback, right? So thumbs up for them, but there will be some archetypes they couldn't capture. And uh, I, I just guessed, basically just looked at the data, see how it stacks up and guess kind of the, the win rate there. So I have like, I'll explain when we get there, but that's some of the reasons. But most of all, it was pretty accurate. So, you know, generally we can see how things change throughout time. 
Now, first off, we have the tier zeros. So those are going to be overpowered deck lists, basically, and there's none here. So it's been quite a while of nothing hitting this like 59% win rate that I need to put it in here for now. I might um, change the criteria if it becomes like, if there's something too strong and it still doesn't fit this, then maybe I'll change it. But for now, like I, I'm generally fine. Nothing really um, crazy. And I would say, honestly, in my opinion, this is one of the more balanced metas that we've seen so far um, after the blob nerf. Still think you can play blob, but I had like a video of like destroy being the statistically best deck. And that's like, to me, a good sign because I don't think destroy is an oppressive deck to play into. And you can like tech the matchup if you want. So... To me, that's just a good sign that we're in a healthy meta comparative to like other metas, you know. So definitely happy to see there's nothing crazy. Um, now, we do have tier ones, of course, right? Tier one, we just go by popularity in there, not necessarily by win rate, but they usually have like similar win rates here. So we have she not tier one, still strong. Um, dips a little bit in infinite, but you can still play in infinite, so it's not really an issue. Uh, generally, it's win rate has went down, it's key rate has went down, popularity is the same, so it hasn't really lost any popularity. And we have changed the metrics and the stats, so there might be some... I was surprised how little um, the metrics changed by adding infinite, honestly, but uh, there were some notable exceptions for sure. But yeah, infinite's still good, still really strong if you like playing Sheena infinite, it's very good. Leech... Leech is crazy. I think Leech is like the secret power of this deck where it does so much in terms of like locking down some of the counterplay that you normally would have while still like being able to be played and not like lose you the game, right? Because it's a 5-3, right? Like that's pretty bad. But since you're playing Magic, you can kind of make up for that. And then the payoff of like knocking out cards like consistently is very good. Now, there's also less Blob. So there's less people just having free infinites. There is more um, Black Knight. So that's the scary matchup if you're playing into Leech, right? Like if if they have st the setup, right? That you you just get, they just play the infinite on you, and you're just like, uh. so that is a little bit scary. But generally, like that's not super super common. But it is something to note. But she not still very good. It like these tier one decks always good. Honestly, since I really started tracking the data, I don't think any of the tier one decks have had an issue, have like dipped down to being like, oh, this is a bad deck. They've always been good. She not, not an exception. Next up, we have Dark Hawk. So, uh, honestly, a little bit surprising that Dark Hawk win rate did not change from the last time we did this, considering that we had this huge blob meta and it was like, oh my god, Dark Hawk unplayable because of blob. Like, the stats didn't really say that, and now Blob is, like, somewhat gone, and it the, the win rate didn't change. The cube rate changed. The popularity has gone down, probably due to people not wanting to play it in Blob meta, but whatever. But still, win rate steam, still good deck. People like it. They have been playing Darkhawk more due to Grandmaster coming out, so I can see... Maybe it rising up. And also some of the Dark Hawk decks are being stolen by Grandmaster decks. Which is something interesting. Because Grandmaster decks are pretty bad. So um, you could say like maybe all of the bad decks for Dark Hawk are in the Grandmaster section that we're going to come up with. So you just have like a clean, a clean Dark Hawk section without any like blemishes. But based on the data here... Win rate's still good. It's still a good deck. Not as popular as it used to be, but people like trying new things, right? A lot of a lot of the popularity has moved to some of the newer cards, which I think is understandable. So yeah, Dark Hawk still consistent. And then we have High Evil, the other <laughs> tier one, High Evil. I honestly don't get why High Evil is good, um, but maybe it's just like the Luke Cage nerf, just means that you don't have any issues with playing Scorpion or Spider Woman or anything like that, and then you get to play the zero power abomination or one power abomination, whatever you want. And 
Cyclops still insane. You got Enchantress, which is really good in some matchups. So Shang Chi as well. So you just have that flexibility. I don't see this archetype at all in my games. No one plays this against me. I, or or if they're like, or I always think they're playing uh, She Hulk. Maybe that's it, and I don't notice they're playing Abomination. I just I see Misty Knight, Shocker, Cyclops, and I'm like, oh, they're playing She Hulk, and maybe that's what's going on here. But Seems to be doing well. Hasn't really changed. Popularity is the same. Winner just went down a little bit, but all of the tier ones have went down a little bit to 55, which I think is very good. So not not a problem here. Next up, we have the the, the tier twos, and here we have the destroy, the one I have been hyping. It doesn't fit the criteria for a tier one, so maybe my criteria is wrong per se, but still a very strong deck. Its stats have went up in particular. I don't necessarily know why. Maybe, you know, Blob or something or Miss Marvel stuff. Like, Miss Marvel got nerfed since the last time we talked, and Blob got nerfed since the last time we talked. So maybe just those two changes. Destroy didn't really get nerfed at all. So it just went up since the matchups were easier. That's something to consider. But yeah, its winner went up, its popularity went up. Hue rate the same, but that's still really good. Having 10% popularity with huge, with super good win rate, like that's just, that's hard to beat in terms of like a consistent deck. It's moved up in the tiers from tier three to tier two. So pretty cool. You know, don't have issues with destroy at all. So if you like destroy, you know, you keep doing what you do. There's a huge sex per, huge percentage of the game that, player base that just loves destroy plays destroy every season doesn't change anything like y'all y'all keep doing you i i don't get it <laughs> i don't i did play destroy a lot this season but you know i it's not really something i love uh next up we have lockjaw thanos lockjaw so this one's went down obviously all of the blob decks have went down in my opinion so this was no exception uh, popularity went down, can rate that went down, win rate went down. Still very good, still playable, right? 53 is very good win rate. So, and you can find like weird interact, like weird instances that are much higher, right? This this one has 59.3% win rate, which is like, you know, kind of crazy. Obviously, the games played is very low. So, it's not something you can, you can rely, like, once you get to 10K and you're like 57, then you're like, okay. But right now, you know, it's not um, a popular list, but still. I do see a lot of comments saying that they still play Thanos and it does really well for them. So kind of feels like a perception thing though. I will say like it is worse, right? You're, you don't get 40 power blobs anymore. So it's worse, but it's still playable, still good. And people are doing well with it. Just the stats have went down because it was broken before. Right. Uh, next up we have Lockjaw. I mean, Lockdown. So this is just, this is one of the decks that just sticks around. And I, I mean, I get why, like, Miss Marvel into Storm into Jones into Miss Marvel into Vision is, like, is good, right? So people like it. Professor X has kind of disappeared in this archetype. They're, they Professor X does exist in other archetypes, but not really in, like, heavy lockdown. You, It's more like a Miss Marvel deck that has Professor X, and then you, you maybe play Onslaught or you play Mr. Fantastic or something like that. Like, it's not really... Um, a lockdown specialized archetype but yeah still still good without professor x maybe a little bit more fair you still have Eliot, so still have that problem but cube rates the same popularity and win rates went down a little bit but not too surprising next up we have bounce so bounce is something they don't have they didn't have data for but clearly like there was enough bounce players that it, it mattered um, so i just kind of guessed you know, in terms of the win rates, the popularity, the cube rates, you know, I would say this is pretty accurate. The standard list is still the most, it's still the highest played. And then you have the win rate list that we have, right? So even, even with that, right, some of the other metrics, right, pushing it down, it's still pretty good, right? So arguably, if I were just to use the most popular deck, this would be a tier one deck, right? But there are other versions of the deck that are not performing this well, right? So you have to include that. But still, um, tier two is still great. Bounce getting some love in the next patch as well, or in the next season. 
there's a lot of interesting bounce type cards in my opinion so i could definitely see this getting better over time but still a good deck if you like bounce there's not a problem like bounce is one of the more harder decks to pilot so you know if you like doing that you can if you don't then you'll find other things i'm not sold on werewolf honestly i think you could take out werewolf and you'd be fine that's my opinion i don't like werewolf but people still think werewolf's very good i i don't but like it's doing well so maybe they're on to something uh next up we have move so move is actually shows up now um for some reason i think that's I think this is something they didn't catch before, before I mentioned to them, because I was looking yesterday, there was no move. <laughs> now there's move, so um, that's good. Its stats are pretty good, honestly. Win rate 53 is not bad, so apparently move's pretty good. Though this is mostly Silky Smooth move, right? So we've known Silky Smooth move is a good move deck. It's like the only move deck that really kind of works. It doesn't run Heimdall at all. All the other move decks are a little bit struggling, so I don't know if this is a silky, if this is move, right? This is more silky, silky smooth, but it fits in that category. We'll, we'll give move something, so yeah. In that archetype, it's pretty good. Not a bad list to run if you like playing this type of gameplay. All right, next up we have Shuri. So Shuri's win rate has moved down. Not enough to move it down the tiers or anything like that, but does matter. Its popularity has went up though. And I'm pretty sure that's due to Scar. Scar has given Shuri another like a new way of playing Shuri. As well as Grandmaster. But Grandmaster doesn't show up like that much in the data. But Scar does show up where um you now have the ability to play the Shuri into a five drop and then you have the Scar with something else, right? like Scar Lizard. Or you could play, if you're lucky, right? You could play Sauron into Typhoid Mary into Red Skull, and then you have like double, you have a two cost Scar, which is pretty good as well. So there's definitely some things you can do. So Scar, I think is a pretty good card. So not surprised to see it show up in the, in some data points, so. Shuri, you know, win rate went down, but a lot of win rates, always seem to go down. There's always a new deck that steals win rates. That's what I've noticed. Like, it, it feels like every every uh, time I do this, all the win rates go down. And it's not because they're worse. It's just like there's a new deck and that deck is beating them and they're st stealing some of the win rates. You know, what can you do? Um, next up, we have Stature. So Stature is interesting. There's only one list in the data. No, there's no other list that's even the the next played game is like 200 or 100 something like there's no other list it's just this list so this list is doing well its popularity obviously is not that high uh but it's cool that statures come back um it was used to be the best deck of the game this was like a long time ago but there's been some improvements some nerfs right so stature got I think Black Bull got nerfed and something else got nerfed in that archetype, but still playable. I don't remember if Stature was a 5-7 or anything like that, but um, if you like Stature, you know, people have been playing with it. Nico's coming in. I don't know why. I mean, Nico's just a good card, right? X-23 is easy, easy tech for your Silver Samurai, things like that. So is your, so is your Dakin, so... Thumbs up for me. I don't have too much, too much opinion on this this one. Hella. Now Hella has probably gotten the biggest bump in terms of win rate. I would say from one month to another. Now I feel like Hella is cheating, right? Because if you look at this, you see like there's a new card that I don't have that's uh, taking all of the like that's actually doing all the work and that is the black knight right there is a black knight archetype specifically so that's black knight without hella uh but hella with black knight seems to be doing really well you also have lockjaw which is you know it's a card in itself so there's a lot of like good things going for this particular archetype and hella used to be under 50 percent win rate right like just generally but since most people playing Hella are also playing Black Knight now. 
Um, and you can see this is one of the most popular decks in the game. You can see the form like 44,000. Like that's, there's nothing close to that, <laughs> right? So it's literally this one list carrying Hella. Uh, but there's, there's obviously other, other uh, lists kind of dragging down the way, right? But still very good. If you like playing Hella, this is probably the deck to run. A lot of, a lot of consistency, right? Like a deck with a high win rate with tons of games, you just know is reliable. So Black Knight helping Hella crazy and giving you like multiple ways to win the game. You also, like it gives you like a third way to win because normally you have Lockjaw and then Hella. Like those are your two ways to win. Now you're adding this Black Knight, summon a a twenty power blade for no reason like okay <laughs> you know just another tool that could just win you the game for free so yeah definitely uh um, definitely strong so yeah hell is back in back in business baby and then next up another one that got bumped up is junk so junk was one of those archetypes that was super popular but his stats were horrible and i will say it looks like the Celine change has done most of the work, as well as like Blob being nerfed and, and Miss Marvel being nerfed. Like, but it seems like its win rate has moved up in terms of in relation to those matchups. So his cube rates went huge. Like his cube rate was near zero, I believe, last time. Now it's 0.15. Like that's respectable. His win rate is now up there. So probability went down, of course, but. That's to be expected, right? Like after <laughs> after doing poor, your your popularity should go down. And also, like a lot of people were were playing before with before the annihilus nerf and things like that. So junk's looking okay right now. Now junk being good, I don't think is something second dinner really likes to see. So always interested to see if they're going to gut gut. Annihilus again, but for now, you know, it seems playable, seems good. So if you like playing junk, you can. Uh, next up, we have regular Thanos. So this is Thanos while Lockjaw. So, you know, obviously Blob got nerfed, and this is the reason you were mostly playing Thanos, and all the stats went down. So, you know, if you're going to play Thanos, it looks like Thanos Lockjaw is like the best way to do it, but you can do other things. It's just. Statistically not as good, but still pretty good. Like fifty two is not bad. I'm not gonna that's not a problem. It's just like, you know, there are other versions of Thanos that people like to play. Next up we have Iron Patriot. So this stats went up, I think mostly due to Dazzler. Just the Dazzler change helped a lot of these like Patriot flood decks to see play. And its win rate has moved up. Like Dazzler's a two eight if you can fill all the lanes. Like that is that's good. Like that's that's good. Like so there's definitely a lot of uh, experimentation to try to find good Patriot lists. We also had some streamer decks show up and influence the stats like crazy. Not for Iron Patriot, but for regular Patriot. Patriot was not seeing any play at all last month. <laughs> now it's like quite good or quite high, so uh, kind of interesting to see, but yeah, Iron Patriot's doing better since, um, in win rate. Its cube rate is worse, which is always, like, maybe people aren't snapping when they're, when they're going to win. They're not, like, it, and that makes sense, right? Because Dazzler is a card you have to get used to in terms of knowing exactly how much power you're going to get and then how you're going to play it out. And when you look strong, right, you might just have, like, a Dazzle on the board and you look very weak, but... Once you fill it, it's, you get plus six. Like, that's so good. It's a mojo, right? Like, it's a mojo for your lane, essentially. So, like, that's quite good. So, pretty pretty powerful card. It's a mojo for your lane. It's not something I've thought about. That makes me, like, that makes me think. But I'll move on. Anyways, yeah. Decent to play now. Next up, we have Tier Force. First one, most popular, is... Da -da 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 -da, discard it got worse <laughs> apparently um now i messed up here i think like where you see the win rate didn't really change right but the tier the tier has changed this was what i was talking about where i put 
this in tier three, even though it's win rate was like tier four level, just because I had 51 in two tiers. So I could have put it in either tier three or tier four, and it, it would have fit my criteria. But here being more strict, it's it should be a tier four. So it's it's tier didn't really change, but I put tier three last time. So I'm just correcting that. It's probably that you has went way up actually like way up like meek made a lot of people try discards his q rates went down a little bit but it goes to like i'm surprised how effective meek was at changing the popularity of discard at least for this patch like five percent is high like that is that is noticeable and i have seen meek in my like in my game so people are playing discard uh, even even higher tier, you know, maybe they give up after a while. But yeah, this card hasn't really changed. Like it's not that good, but it's more popular than before. Um, I don't think the meek stats are that impressive, but you could definitely find some discard decks that do work, right? If you have all the discard cards, like, and you have a like, a nihilus just or not a nihilus. American Chavez just made your deck more consistent. It didn't make your deck like better. You could still high roll um, a discard deck and do really well. It's just that Chavez meant that you could play it over and over and have the likelihood of hitting your combo a lot higher. So, yeah, interesting to see. Uh, next up, we have Black Knight in by itself. No, um, no Hella shenanigans. This one is not as powerful it seems even and and i will say like this this is the sarah like the popular one is the sarah version i i see the appeal of using sarah i just don't know if i love it like maybe there's a better list without sarah but even the even the win rate list has sarah in it so maybe they're just maybe that's just onto something or people are just not experimenting or people are just playing hella since that's when seems better to me uh but yeah Popularity of this, of just Black Knight No Hell, is still pretty high. Like 4.5% is pretty high. Win rate, though, is not as efficient. So you can see, like, the consistency issue. I would say, like, I don't think the deck is bad, but I think there's a lot of consistency problems where you have to have Black Knight and then have the discard, right? Either Blade or Lady Civ, and then you need to play the Ebony Maw. Then, if you want, like, a really good late game, you need Zabu into like double four right to really pop off or you have scar to go like four two or something like that right so that's just a whole lot of like requirements for it to work out and 50 percent of the time maybe you could find a, a move that wins but it's not as reliable as like oh you can high roll lockjaw you can high roll hella you can high roll the black knight you know you have way more options so here you can high roll like maybe ghost rider right like ghost rider Blade turn six with Zabu on the fort is like that's forty, that's what forty three power worth of stats on the final turn. Like that's not balanced at all. And one is unkillable. Like, <laughs> like that's not balanced, right? So there's definitely some broken stuff, right? Like, but the consistency is the main issue, I would say for for standard Black Knight decks, and, and you can see it in the win rate. Uh, next up, we have a Patriot. So Patriot. I will say its win rate and cube rate did not really move, which I'm surprised about. But I think that's um, that's more due to the bad Patriot decks and and, and not this particular uh, uh, current list because there there's a lot of like you're like looking through there was a lot of weird Patriot stuff like that was like this is not a, a this is not a deck that will ever work. Uh, like oh yeah like okay, oh. oh. Look how I I gave an example. Thank. <laughs> Look at the next list. So this is this is the standard list. Like this is the most popular list. That's due to Jeff, you know, popularizing this particular list. It's a good list, and I I definitely thumbs up it. But look at the next list you have here. It's just like negative. This counts as a patriot list because there's a patriot in there, and patriot like dwarfs the archetype. You like this could be a negative list right because it, it has a lot of negative cards but I, I i can see why it's a patriot list in the archetype database but just look like how do you win here and i mean you can win but it's it's removing at least in the stats it's making 
page should look a lot worse than it is, right? Because if you just look at this first list, right, 52% win rate, that would be a tier three, right? Like that would be quite good. Like that's not bad. 0.20 cube rate, like 17,000 games. This is good data. This is good stats. Like you could play this and I play this and I think it's good, right? But because you have decks like this next one, it just ruins the the data of Patriot, right? It makes Patriot look like pretty, pretty bad when you look at it like that, but it's actually a lot better. So I'm just defending Patriot here. I think Patriot's good if you have the right deck and Jeff's list is, a, is the type of deck that's pretty cool, pretty unique. So just wanted to throw that in there, right? Cause it, it's a lot, I think Patriot's a lot better than this, like than the stats say. So that's, that's all. Uh, next up we have Loki. So Loki got nerfed since last time we talked and the data does show that it's a lot worse. Like. It lost quite a lot of win rate, went from tier two to tier four. Populars went down a little bit as well. Key rate also uh, is not doing too well. So um, I don't think it's the type of deck you're going to, you need to be playing high elo. That used to be the case, but I think you have options now. Collector, removing collector from the Loki, um, the Loki base, the Loki like structure, hurt Loki a lot. Like that was a lot of times Collector was giving you like 10 plus power. So you just lose that option of getting 10 plus power. So it makes, it means you have to actually like fight it out. You have to use your opponent's cards. You can't just like play Collector Loki, get and win a free lane for no reason. Then you just have to use the other cards, the cheaper cards to win a, another lane for free. Like you actually have to work at it. So um, I do think if you are a Loki player, you can now play Loki guild free. Like, you, I don't feel bad about playing Loki players. You can play Loki guild free. You're like, I'm a Loki man. Yeah, that's fine. You know, for now, until something new problematic comes up and then we're like, how dare Loki players have access to this? But for now, you know, its stats are reasonable. You know, there's definitely going to be some games that do really well and maybe there'll be new versions that are a little bit more oppressive, but currently not oppressive at all and its stats kind of showcase that next up we have something that showed up sarah control so sarah control wasn't didn't have enough popularity to show up last month but shows up here now it's always been a good i think sarah control is once again also better than the stats dictate just because um you you do require good meta knowledge to play sarah control work well since you have to know kind of what your opponent's trying to do and that means you need a good grasp of what they're playing and, and what they're likely to play and where they're likely to play it so it does require a little bit more thought but it is it also did get nerfed because miss marvel got nerfed and that was a common sarah tool these days but still still good if you can counter your opponent's deck you can win so and people like playing legion I don't know if I like Legion and Terror Control, but people like it. So, you know, whatever. You do you. Um, so, yeah. Next up, we have the Surfer representative with Shaw Surfer. Still regular Surfer. is still mostly just Shaw, Shaw version of Surfer. Uh, Surfer. But the popularity of, of Surfer has dropped a cliff. Like, it, it went down a lot. So, uh, not as much Surfer gamers these days. The win rate also suffers. The key rate also suffers. But it, it's dropped down the tier. But yeah, kind of interesting to see how much people, like how much people change from their deck, their, what they're playing from one season to another, right? Like last season, everyone's playing Shaw, I guess because it was new, right? Now no one's, well, there's still some people playing Shaw, but it's definitely not the same level of, of, of dominance as it was before. And next up we have Zoo. So Zoo did not show up last season. Now it shows them now. It's pretty much due to Dazzler once again. So Dazzler has made some people, you know, try Zoo again. Now regular Zoo, like Kazar Zoo doesn't show up in the data. No one's playing Kazar Zoo. But people are playing Thanos with a Dazzler and a Kazar sometimes. Like, <laughs> and that's enough to be like, hey, that's a Zoo, baby. Kazar sometimes with Dazzler, that's Zoo, baby. So yeah. <laughs> uh, it's win rate's okay. It's cube rate's, you know, okay. Not nothing special, but it is something you can do if you want to play um if you want to play Dazzler in the Thanos list. 
you can find some lists that work, so yeah, pretty cool. And then we have Cerebro Zoo, Cerebro 2, Cerebro Zoo. I mean, Cerebro 2 is kind of Cerebro Zoo in, in a weird way, but yeah, its stats went up for Cerebro 2. Do I know why? Honestly, no, I don't know. Oh, oh, Electra, maybe Electra. You can play Electra in Cerebro 2. I'm, I'm down for it. For that being the reasoning. Popularity hasn't changed, but it's when we went up, Cubeway went up. I mean, any deck that's not playing Blob or or Miss Marvel, right, sh saw kind of a increase in their stats, right, comparatively, since they're playing easier matchups. And then Electra being in, like, there's there's that's meaningful. We we love to see that. I'm a I'm an Electra fan in terms of the card itself. I don't know much about the lore or anything, but yeah, I like the the effect of it. I think it's pretty I think it's neat. But yeah. Cerebro 2 went up the best Cerebro currently, right? It's the only one not in tier 5, so you gotta give it some credit. I don't see it at all, at all though, unfortunately. I see Cerebro 3 more than I see Cerebro 2 for some reason. And then next up we have Tribunal. So Tribunal... Oh, right. So Tribunal stats are horrible. Now, this is a lie. So, so once again, this is where the stats lie to you completely. So if you actually look into the stats, it's because Howard the Duck decks are horrible. They're so bad. They're, <laughs> they're tanking Tribunal stats off a cliff. Like, anytime, like, there's, a, there's enough Howard the Duck decks that are absolutely atrocious that are making Tribunal... Uh, not at least tier four. Like without, if you removed Howard the Duck decks, you this would be over fifty percent for sure. But because Howard the Duck is in some of these tribunal lists, it is completely ruining uh, the stats of tribunal making a tier five list. But I will say, like it's not, it's not like it did get worse, right? It lost Blob. All the tribunal decks before were using Blob, to and that helped massively. So. Blob Tribunal was really good, was meta, was very strong, actually being meta, like good enough to win against other like pure meta compositions. Without Blob, without 40 power <laughs> Blobs out of nowhere, you don't really see that type of crazy win percentages. But I will say like Howard the Duck also is ruining the stats here, but you know, still significant enough drop in win rate that it's fine to put in tier five like a lot of if you're a tribunal player you know what to do you're not you're not you're probably not playing this version of tribunal anyway so i think it's generally fine well i guess you could be playing this version of tribunal this isn't i don't know if you need sarah anyways but there's other tribunals that are doing well uh next up we have galactus so Galactus popularity went down a lot, and its win rate also went down a lot. And I I don't know why per se, but its cube rate is still like okay. Like its cube rate is is better than a lot of other decks uh, here. But some some about some about the changes, Galactus suffered. I think people are just like not playing as much Galactus. They're losing. Maybe there's more junk or more decks that can deal with it. People are playing armor, kind of. People are playing Cosmo, kind of. So maybe just in those matchups, it's just really tough, so. I don't have Galactus, so I, I don't notice it. You, ha you, have to, you have to tell me like what the, the Galactic experience is like. I can only, I only play against it and I try to deal um, if someone's like waving me randomly, but sometimes I get caught off guard, but. It's hard it's hard getting like tons of cues right from Galactus because you know you're losing, right? They play Galactus and you you know you're losing. Or they fill a lane, right, with with their hobgoblin or something, and you know, okay, like they're gonna Galactus me. You know you're losing. So it's hard it's hard to get tons of cubes, but some people could do it. Next up we have negative. So good news, there's like really good news here. Negative's win rate went up negative cube rate went way up it used to be negative cube rate right but it's actually now in the positives now i think 
Personally, I think the biggest reason for that is people are not playing Havoc anymore. Havoc was horrible for the stats. Like, it wasn't doing a lot of good news. So people have stopped playing with Havoc. Because of that, negative has its kind of curve back. And that's making it do well. It's making it good. Now, I will say it's going to rate up, and it's still 46%. Like, it's still, you know, not good. So... Uh, you take your wins and losses where you have them, but still a good trend for negative. Uh, negative is one of those scary decks when if it does well, it's it's like problematic, right? So it seems to be in a good good place. Its cube rate is at least functionable or function functioning. So we take those as we can. Next up, we have Hella Tribunal. So this is Tribunal with Hella, Modoc Hella, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, honestly, win rate hasn't changed. Popularity hasn't changed. Kill rate went down a little bit, but not, not that much. So Modoc Hella, if you like their combos, you could still do it. You, you know the drill. You're not getting a high win rate, but you're going to get cubes when it works. And if they don't have cause, if they don't have... Magneto or any any counters like you know you you get there so yeah y'all do you uh, next up we have Cerebro three so Cerebro three um definitely I would say the most popular Cerebro right now I think I'm I'm, I'm sure that's true um people like I don't know what's a what's a Cere people like Valkyrie yeah that's right and Basque I guess. Uh, win rate and cube rate didn't change too much. Popularity went up, so people play more Cerebro for some reason. I don't, I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know everything about every archetype in the meta, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm guessing here. But yeah, Cerebro three hasn't changed too much. Still tier five. Win rate under, under um, fifty percent, which is a little bit unfortunate, but maybe things will get better with time. I was hoping that Ravona would really revive the cerebro deck right because now you can play cerebro and mystique turn four right you have iron man you could play for four mana that's like, pretty good like there's a lot of benefits but maybe like the issue is just the base power is still low and people can just get like 30 power on a lane and, and beat that lane right so and if you're not Valkyrieing your Cerebro lane, that lane's going to be behind. So there's just issues there that maybe that's hard to always account for. And you have to run a lot of tech a lot of times, sometimes kill Margaret and stuff if you, if you suffer in those matchups. So there's, there's definitely some things that make Cerebro struggle, but it's, you know, it's trucking along and, and maybe there'll be a time where Cerebro's the best. Uh, next up, we have Phoenix Force. So yeah, Phoenix Force still, still one of the only archetypes where the most popular deck is negative average cubes, right? Forty four percent. This is the most popular deck for Phoenix Force. Negative eleven cube rate, forty four percent win rate. Like that's that's not good. <laughs> its popularity went up though, for some reason. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but yeah, people people like this archetype, and people are and I I agree. When it's winning, it wins so hard. I agree. Like when you can play Human Torch, Carnage into Phoenix Force, into Shuri into Phoenix Force, move move Arlen Zola, you have like two hundred power. I don't know Human Torch or whatever it is. Like yeah, it's it's great. It's just not consistent, obviously, and. You lose too many games when you're losing cubes, I feel. And people can counter that, right? People can killmonger you if you're if you're doing uh human torch or they can shang chi for sure. Like they, there's counters so so they can they can also shadow king you. Like that's also a really common thing that just like uh, I lose on 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 the spot I lose, right? So um because there's like tech counters it's it's hard to say oh you're always going like it, even in the god scenarios if they're running a shadow king you can just auto lose so that's kind of the problem and things like that so yeah. and then finally in terms of the tier fives we have grandmaster so you know i i'm still a believer of grandmaster in terms of there will be something broken 
released with it if you don't have it you're going to be like ah yeah i missed my window now you can probably like the thing about grandmasters let's say there is something broken or grandmaster you could you can tech right you can just run a cosmo in the middle lane you can run um other stuff probably <laughs> you can like if it's like black panther you can shang chi it you can zola it you can you can get rid of like you can deal with grandmaster so it's probably the case that you probably don't have to get grandmaster but i will say grandmaster is a fun card it's a fun card like for many reasons it's 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 an interesting deck building card it's an interesting gameplay card like it's one of the more skill intensive cards i think secondary is release period like nico's kind of that level but a lot of times, Nico is like, okay, just wait for something good. Where, I mean, I guess Grandmaster is like, play, play Grandmaster to something good. So maybe, maybe that's the same. Uh, but still, I, it's still pretty skill intensive, especially. There's definitely been some games. I remember um, watching someone, right? And they had a storm and they could have stormed the middle lane to get rid of Limbo and they didn't see it. And the chat was like ha hassling them. But I think. That's hard to, 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 to know. Like, day one, you're playing this card. It's hard to, like, think about that. You know, if you, um, like, maybe you play the, you know, 200 games, then it's more clear-cut in that particular arc, uh, deck that you could do that. But, you know, it's it's not something you think about day one of playing this type of card. So, I still, I still believe in them. Though the stats say uh, maybe not. And I, I just think people are just experimenting with, Grandmaster with lots of different decks that aren't um, that aren't traditional Grandmaster decks. I will say that um, Ronin shows up, right? This is like the best this is like the best Grandmaster deck is average cubes of zero, I know. <laughs> but the win rate is pretty good. So it means that like if people can like really get confident in how to in when you're strong, like maybe turn two or turn three you're snapping if you're like master mode Grandmaster. Um, like that's good enough, or you have Rock Slide and Grandmaster and Dark Hawk in your hand, and you're like, oh, that's good enough. Like maybe people just need to figure out how to snap better with Ronin. But it looks like Ronin Grandmaster is the one performing the best for Grandmaster right now. But I think over time people will just figure it out and and Grandmaster will do well. So I I still think this the data is a bait here, and Grandmaster is actually worth getting, but. Well, like time will tell, right? So those are the tier fives, and then we have the uh, the archetypes that have disappeared from last month. So they were here last month. They don't have enough play uh, games or anything. They don't show up. Uh, so first one we have is Cerebro Five. So I think that's because of Miss Marvel um, being changed. Essentially, I think that's the main reason why Cerebro Five is dead. But um, yeah, no. This is the most about of, like, this is the highest played Cerebro 5 deck, 140 games. That's nothing, right? So there's just not really anyone playing Cerebro 5 anymore. Uh, honestly, Cerebro 5 stats are pretty good, though they're all, like, under 100 games. So, like, it's, it's, um, it's, it's, you know, not, not really conclusive. But I will say, like, there are like five or six versions of this deck and they're all above 50%. So that's usually kind of rare when you have low stats because you will have decks that just have like 30% win rate, <laughs> you know, because they just, they're either being piloted by one guy who doesn't know the archetype or they, there's just an unlucky string of losses, right? But they're all in the green. So maybe Cerebral 5 is still viable even with the Miss Marvel nerf, but people just aren't aren't playing with it anymore next up we have ongoing so ongoing also is be, um gone because miss marvel got nerfed and something i thought was cool i might start doing um in the future if i remember i should remember but i found the same deck from last month that was like the, the standard deck of last month i found this like this season, what its win rate was, right? So you can see last month, 58.9% win rate, which is like way too high to be fair, <laughs> right? That's, that's crazy. Uh, 
over you know three six hundred games. Look, that's a lot. Now you look at it now, forty nine point four win rate. So that's that's only due to the Miss Marvel nerf, right? As well as like maybe people getting better at playing into Miss Marvel or people playing Miss Marvel themselves in a different archetype or being you know prepared to fight the archetype. But generally, like still, oh. Oh, this might be due to uh, me changing the data structure as well, right? Because I took out the um, the people that had under three three k collection level. This is absolutely a under three k collection level deck, right? They're still running Colossus. Like, get out of here, right? So this is maybe me fixing up the data, where in the previous data this would show up because you're you have players that don't have all the cards. A lot, a lot of times now, above three K collection, you're gonna have at least some, some archetypes to play with. So you're you're likely not gonna play a deck like this. So, you know, that's just me fixing the data. You know, hopefully, hopefully we see less of this kind of data showing up. Uh, next up again is Ronin. So Ronin, once again, you can kind of see uh, last month to this month. So same deck, right? The only change is the Miss Marvel nerf. Honestly, it's data didn't isn't that bad. And also, uh, a lot of the Ronin data was absorbed into Grandmaster data. There's also like a lockdown version. I was like, okay, but you know, it wasn't too bad. But yeah, um, pretty much people stopped playing Ronin after the hype died down for some reason. Maybe like content creators didn't play with this deck anymore or something like that. But yeah, Ronin... Still, I think Ronin's still a good card. It's just not that popular. People just don't like it as much. I don't know why. I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Maybe people don't like Master Mold. Card is like annoying in a boring way. Uh, you don't you don't know how much it's affecting your opponent. Kind of like Iceman, right? You don't know how much it's affecting your opponent. That kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, Ronin kind of disappeared from last patch. Kind of interesting. And then the last one, which I think was also kind of interesting, was um, Electro Ramp. So Electro Ramp was an archetype that also got hugely buffed by Blob, right? You were able to play Blob into Taskmaster or Blob into Tribunal, that kind of thing. So Electro Ramp's kind of been dying a slow death uh, in the metagame. There's just more things to do. People like playing multiple cards. That's another thing. As Sandman also not being like that popular. People aren't really seeing the benefit of Sandman in the metagame. So it's just hard to really have Electro Ramp be like a, a powerful force in the meta. So people just aren't playing it. So you can kind of see the difference here. Huge drop in win rates and huge drop in number of games. The probability isn't zero, but it's near that. So kind of sad to see. But it just it's just showing some of the meta adjustments to changing powerful archetypes, powerful cards, right? So Miss Marvel, Blob, those are the two biggest um, hits. And you can see like these are some of the ramifications, right? Like Electro Ramp dies, uh, you know, Thanos Lockjaw gets worse. It doesn't die, but it gets worse, you know, things like that. So overall, that is pretty long one for us today, uh, just because I try to cover almost everything. That we have so hope you guys enjoyed it i'll see you in the next one take care of yourselves have a wonderful rest of your day please i hope uh, i'm not gonna talk about it anyways take care <laughs> once you watch him you won't go back he'll teach you to marvel snap your skills will be improving how you do